Hello friends, please subscribe so I can afford to see a therapist about my Diet Dr. Pepper addiction here, bringing you another Dota 2 video in which we're going to be talking about how to buy the proper items in Dota 2. Now I know that sounds a little boring of a title for a video, uh, but let me sell you on this. I legitimately think that the difference between a 7k player and a 3 to 4k player is not mechanics. It is not being able to get a Rampage, being able to 1v5, knowing the spells, or any of that sort of thing. Uh, in fact, I would say from most of the people that I've coached, that especially the ones that spam heroes, they're not only good with heroes, some of these guys are in the top 0.001% for certain heroes in terms of mechanics. And still, they're like 3 to 4k MMR. And this is this is the case because people have played Dota for so goddamn long. We've all played for years. It's, it's an aging demographic. It's an aging game. We've all played for so long. But the problem is decision-making. That, that is the problem. That is the biggest difference, in my opinion, between a 7k player and a 3 to 4k player. Uh, basically, every 2 to 3 minutes, you have a big decision to make. A 7k player will make a good decision. 3 to 4k player might make a good decision. And that, that's the big difference. And items are a huge component to that decision, uh, to those possible decisions, I should say. So what I want to do is take a look at a bunch of drafts from the recent major, the, ra the major that's currently on, and essentially break down uh, some of the items. If I see anything that stands out, why these particular players went for these particular items on their heroes. So the first game we have is EG versus Navi. We have Ricky, Magnus, Lich, Brewmaster, Elder Titan versus Tiny Drow, Viper, uh, Disruptor and Underlord. So the first thing that stood out to me in this game is that the very first item that Pasha went for was a Rod of Atos. You might be wondering, okay, why would you go for a Rod of Atos on Underlord instead of going for something like a Pipe of Insight, Mechanism, things like that? Because generally speaking, this hero likes to build tanky. He likes to frontline. And uh, you might also know that the Rod of Atos is an item that you can pair with the Pit of Malice. You use the Pit of Malice, you Atos, you, the Pit of Malice will proc again, and you're essentially just disabling somebody for six seconds or something ridiculous like that. So this is a good item, but why go for this over some sort of Pipe of Insight or, or defensive build? You know, this hero is good at doing both. And in my opinion, the reason that he went for this is because if you look at the other heroes on the team, we have a pause for Tiny. So before Tiny gets a blink, he is not very good at disabling people. The toss is not going to work. He, he needs to get right on top of people to toss. The avalanche is a pseudo disable. They have drow who once again also has pseudo disables in the slows. They have viper who's got slows. They have disruptor who has the kinetic field. That's also a pseudo disable. They do have the static, uh, the whatever the hell the disruptor ulti is, the static field, whatever it is. And that's a good disable, but it's on a long cooldown and you have to pair it up with the kinetic field as well. Static Storm, that's what it is. So basically, they have a bunch of heroes that have pseudo disables or long cooldown disables. And in my opinion, that is probably why he went for the Atos in this game. Obviously, it's good on the hero in general, but that paired with the fact that they really need some sort of guaranteed lockdown in teamfights that doesn't have a 100 or whatever it is second cooldown. So that's that's why he went for this item. And then if you look and see the other, the, the two cores, the other two cores on this side, they both went for a very early four staff hurricane pike. So it's kind of a damage item, but also a four staff. And I think a big reason for this is because they know that they're going to need to save themselves from this EG draft. They they know that their underlord doesn't have any defensive items. Four staff is a defensive item, but no, like strictly, I'm gonna buff my team, I'm gonna heal my team. He doesn't have a pipe, doesn't have a mech, doesn't have a crimson guard, anything like that. So these guys need to save themselves. So that's why they went for four staff. And that's a big consideration that you should make in your pubs. If your team is not building the correct defensive items in your core, you cannot expect them to save you. And in this particular situation, it wasn't they weren't, th th that their underlord wasn't building the defensive items because he's bad. He was not building the defensive items because they needed the disable coming from this Rod of Atos plus the ability combo that they have with the hero. Of course, first item, Tiny goes for a Blink Dagger. Uh, the reason that this is really important, because there is potential that Tiny could go for like a Yules, a Four Staff. Uh, I've, I've seen people in pubs go for Tiny and they'll go like Echo Saber and they'll go, they'll go the damage build, which generally speaking, I think that's pretty bad because usually if you are a Four Tiny, you are going to have cores that should be do, doing damage. And in this case, of course they do. So in this game, he goes for the Blink Dagger because they have no real initiation. They have Drow, she has no initiation. They have Viper, of course, he has no initiation. He's so slow. They have Disruptor, which is decent at initiating, but it's like 50% of the time. It's with the bringing somebody back with the Glimpse. Uh, but that's something that depends on the enemy team's positioning and that's not guaranteed. So they need some sort of guaranteed initiation. 
Underlord is not going to do that. He's more of like when the fight actually starts, he's going to disable people. Atos isn't an initiation. Uh, it's it's. It's not reach. What what people like to call it is is reach. I think Kyle or something in, in, invented that term, and that just basically means the ability to like jump a hero who's out of position, and they have none of that other than disruptor and tiny. And the disruptor, like I said, fifty percent of the time. So that's why tiny went for the blink dagger first. If we go to the late game, uh, we can see it's a lot of defensive items from the drow ranger. We'll get to that when we cover the EG draft a little bit. Uh, lots of defensive items from the viper, BKP of course, assault cuirass, four staff. Disruptor, Agnum Scepter, that's just a good item. And then after going for this Atos, Pasha does dip back to go for Lotus Orb, Heaven's Halberd, which is more the standard offlane uh, kind of, you know, defensive items that you would expect from an offlaner. But one thing I do want to point out about this, the, the itemization coming out from, uh, from Navi, is that they have four four staffs. They have Hurricane Pike, they have Hurricane Pike, they have four staff, they have four staff. And the reason for that, it may look excessive, is because if you look at the EG draft, they have Ricky. He puts a bunch of stuff on the ground. He does this little circle thing. He makes the, the silence on the ground. They have uh, Magnus, who uses the RP in one particular location after blinking in. They have the Lich, who has a Lich ulti bouncing around. And then he puts the Frost Shield on somebody. They have the Brewmaster who pops the ulti, and then the Pandas, they have like a specific move speed, they're in a specific location. And then they have an Elder Titan who he's going to throw his Earth Splitter, or whatever the hell it's called, I'm forgetting all the spell abilities, uh, the names, but it's it's all in a located in a specific area. So basically, Navi has identified this game that all of EG's draft and their team fighting depends on stuff that is just placed in a location. And if they can just get out of it, they don't need any other sort of defensive items in terms of like a mechanism, uh, pipe of insight. They're not going to try to survive through it. They're going to get themselves out and then reinitiate when all of those cooldowns are down. And I think that's a really good approach to this EG draft because I don't think you can actually fight into all of EG's team fight. I think you're going to lose. That's going to do enough damage. Even if you have a gold lead, you're probably going to lose. Next, let's take a look at this game between Team Master and Fnatic. Uh, on Aster, we have Ember Spirit, Rubik, Abaddon, it's a 5 Abaddon, 4 Rubik, uh, offlane Ember, surprisingly. Then we have a Gyrocopter carry, of course, mid Magnus, uh, 5 Puck, Disruptor is a 4, these kind of weird heroes, uh, Necrophos offlane, then we have a carry Naga and a mid Viper. So let's take a look at Fnatic's items. So very first, we have Puck. This is our position 5. And you can see that he doesn't really build any small items other than the essentials, like the Boots of Speed, the Magic Wand, and then he sends clarities, things like that. But he actually goes for a first big item, Force Staff. And this is a more common trend these days, mainly because, and I hate to say this, I'm sorry to all position fives out there, close your ears. Position fives are garbage disposals. They, they pick up all of the garbage items nobody else wants. And if you're going for bracers and things like that, then there are going to be wasted items. So you have a lot more gold to spend uh, because you don't need to build bracers because you have those items from the jungle. So you can spend it on wards. You can spend it on a big item such as a four staff. For Puck, I know this is a pretty common trend these days where you go for a four staff on a support Puck or even offlane Puck because, of course, you can use it to save your team. If we look at the Team Master draft, there's the Searing Chains from Ember, there's the Rubik Lift, there's the Silence from Abaddon, uh, there's Gyro Ulti, Gyro Missile, things like that, Mag Skewer, Mag Ulti. There's a lot that you can four staff somebody out of and save them, and that's going to be quite effective. But on Puck, it has the duality of also stunning people with the coil. You can force them and break the coil at the very end of it and then get that extra damage, extra stun duration. And that's a pretty cool combo. And if we look at the side of uh, Team Fnatic, they actually kind of lack a decent amount of disable. They have Necrophos, no disable. They have Naga, no disable because you don't level net until much later. They have Viper, no disable. They have Disruptor, pseudo disable. So the Puck being able to do a lot of disable with cheap items but also act as a support is very important. And that's what this four staff allows the Puck to do. It's very nice. Uh, Disruptor, DJ played four Disruptor and he rushed straight Aghanim Scepter. Once again, we can see that his, in his inventory, there are these garbage jungle items that his other heroes didn't want. As a support, you're going to get those. So I suppose the, you know, why, why build into these smaller items when you know that your cores are just going to give you the jungle items they don't want because they're getting so much gold. Uh, so he goes for the Aghanim's Rush. And he got it at about, let's see, 27 minutes. And if we go to the enemy team, we can see the Gyrocopter picked up a BKB at about... It's a very early BKB, actually. Uh, 19 minutes. 
So there's about eight minutes where Gyro has a BKB and Disruptor does not have an Aghanim Scepter. So Gyro was pretty strong for a very small window of the game because DJ rushed the Aghanim Scepter. He basically just knows that this enemy team needs to pick up a BKB because if they pick up a BKB and DJ or Jabs don't get an early Aghanim Scepter, then what can Fnatic do to kill these heroes through BKB? Nothing. Coil does not break BKB unless you have Ags, and the Disruptor ulti does not break BKB if, unless you have Ags. Scythe doesn't go through BKB anymore. Naga Net doesn't go through BK, BKB anymore. So basically this rush, uh, this is a common thing on Disruptor these days, but this rush is essential because the BKB on this hero and then the BKB also on Magnus, which came out a little bit later. So basically DJ nullified the strength of the BKB by rushing this Aghanim Scepter. And he felt like everything else was dealt with. They had enough damage, they had enough lockdown until that BKB timing came out from these two cores. And then we have Ice Ice Ice. Uh, what did he go for? He went for Buckler. He always goes for an early Buckler. is a very common thing on offlaners. It's just super efficient for pushing the wave. Boots, Magic Wand, of course. Uh, he went for a first item, Yule Scepter. He did go for a Bracer beforehand just to give him a little bit of magic resist, a little bit of tankiness against the magic damage from the Gyrocopter, from the Ember Spirit. But he went for a Yule's first. And I would say that it's, it's probably largely equivalent to go for a Yule's or a... Uh, Hood of Defiance, you you almost always want both on a Necrophos just because these are good items at keeping you alive, as well as his team doesn't really have great disable, so they can use this Yules to instantly catch the Ember out and then set up for like a Puck Coil or a Disruptor Ultimate. So the Yules is pretty nice for that. Once again, going back to the fact that essentially Fnatic is making up for the fact that they lack pretty hard disable. Uh, in the in the early game, especially when it's only coming from the supports. If the supports are dead, or if they're not able to get into position because they don't have the items to do it, somebody else is going to need to do that for them, and that's what destruct or that's what uh, the Yule Scepter is going to allow. Let me see. Do they have a vessel? So I believe they build and they're building into a vessel. So presumably he went for the Yules first to try to match up with that vessel timing, so that he had the Yules by the time Rubik picked up the vessel, so he could just dispel himself and heal himself with all of his spells. And then he did go for the Hood of Defiance after that because there's so much magic damage on the side. You have Ember, you have Gyrocopter, Magnus not really, but every other hero does a ton of magic damage. And then he goes for an, uh, an Aghanim Scepter after this because if we look at the other heroes on his team, we have a Naga who is insanely farmed. Look at these ridiculous items. Anytime you have a Nullifier on an Illusion Hero, you know you're going to be farmed. We have a Viper who has a Blink Dagger, Orchid. He's doing a ton of damage. Paladin Sword, Hurricane Pike. He's, he's just going to be shitting out damage. So going for a Radiance or something like that in a game like this would be a massive waste of time. It would be a massive waste of gold. It would be a huge mistake. He goes for the Ags because he he knows he has enough damage. He just wants to get people, burst people, and then keep them dead for as long as possible in as many fights as possible. That's why he went for the eggs next. Uh, Lotus Orb, because it also dispels these, these same things that the Yule Scepter dispels. Going back, we have Ember Spirit. We have the Spirit Vessel and so forth. Naga Siren, he was just so huge. He went for the, the Doom combo of Bloodthorn Nullifier. I think with carries, one of the big things that you need to think about is what you can do around your particular item to item timing. So like, okay, guys, I'm not going to fight until I get a Manta. Maybe I'll try one fight. If it doesn't go well, I'll get a BKB. That's really it. Essentially, the itemization is kind of the same every game because usually the whole draft is around you getting your items as a carry. So it's, it's a little bit less... It's a little more static if you're a carry player. Mid players, however, as you can see from this build, this is this is not something you would normally see on Viper. Uh, I think that he went for the Blink Dagger as a as a an item after the Dragon Lance. He went for Blink Orchid. Now the reason that I think that he did this is there's there, there's a few reasons in this game. Uh, basically, they have three really slow cores, like literally very slow. They run around. They just run at people. That's the only way of getting on top of people. You have Puck. You have Disruptor. These are decent heroes at starting fights. Like I said, Disruptor, 50% of the time, you can sometimes catch people out. Puck, you have the coil, but they don't really have any reach. They don't really have any jump without the Puck going for like a Blink Dagger and this is a support Puck, so it's probably not going to be very effective. So he is the reach on Viper, and if he blinks, Blinks and he orchids the Abaddon, and then he breaks the Abaddon. He can actually t kill the Abaddon through the Abba's ulti, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, so that deals with the Abaddon being an issue, which helps all of the other heroes just take the fight the way they want to. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any requests for content or questions or anything, just make sure to comment below. Uh, also, if you wouldn't mind subscribing if you like this sort of thing, that would uh, definitely help me out quite a bit. And uh, anyway. Hopefully I see you in the next video.